conversation with Melanie Kahneman. Uh, for those who don't know her, I have known Melanie for seven to eight years now, and I have known you to be a leader, Melanie, um, that's thought-provoking. Like, it's so hard to be not your best in your presence. Like, you and I probably haven't worked in the same room together, but I'll tell you this. If I just hear your name, you're coming, my A game comes on. So I want you to know you've always brought the best out of us. And um, for those who are listening in, would you just take a moment and share uh, your role in real estate industry, how you have been such an uh, epitome of, um, you know, the training and the support you have given to agents. Would you share how does your role work out on a day-to-day -day basis in real estate industry? Okay, so my role, so I'm, I'm real, I have my license, right? I've been licensed for 13 years, and I started my career in another city in Nevada, in the Lake Tahoe area, 13 yeah. years ago as an agent. Hmm. And before I did real estate, I was in the movie industry. So when I got into real estate, it reminded me a lot of that. So 10 months later, I became team leader. And team leader in Keller Williams language is really like the, the you know, runs the show. It's the yeah. person every day that's, you know, helping people move forward, make great decisions, creates the energy. Um, and, and so I did that there for three and a half years. And then nine years ago, I had the opportunity to move to Austin. Yeah. And so I've been here, yay, yay. I've been here in Austin for nine years. I can't believe it. And I've known oh you for almost all of those years. <laughs> and, when I, and honestly, uh, and we can talk more about that, but when I, when I was doing my final interviews, because I'd met Diane Johnson, who's been my partner in crime. She'd moved from Nashville a year before me. Before I really decided to come, I flew out here and I realized, you know what? Austin does not know its headquarters, right? But Austin does not know the cool, awesome, cutting edge company we are. And that's where I came from. Like we were the up and coming. And yeah. so coming to Austin, where we were born, I mean, we're an Austin company. I felt like there was a lot of opportunity. So really my role is helping move people forward, recruiting, uh, making sure agents have what they need, have a whole team behind me. Uh, we have, you know, three years ago, I had the opportunity to become operating partner at your yes, market. Center, yes. We're so excited to have you. Your so energy is undeniable. It's, oh, well, this is so great. We have to do this to be able to hang out together, right? <laughs> and so, um, but between the Southwest and Northwest location, then I touch somehow around, you know, almost 1,400 agents. It's about 1,350 and so the role of the operating partner is that you're the voice of the ownership group. And mm -hmm. so you make sure that the team leader and you are in alignment to make things happen. So really, it's kind of interesting that the, the operating partner role, like for me, I love helping team leaders be their best. I love helping people be their best. So your compliments mean a lot to me. Um, I just didn't know what articulate as, a, as a, you know, the, an owner at the Northwest to help the team leaders succeed. So, so really the day-to-day -day is helping create the vision, helping be that coordinator between Keller Williams International and all the things we're coming out with and getting them into the hands of our agents. Because when you really think about all the lives that our agents touch every day on, on the biggest decision in people's lives, it's yeah. an honor, right? It's, it is it's a huge honor. honor. Mm -hmm. Huge honor. So I feel so privileged to be just a little bitty part of that. And if I can help somebody believe in themselves and, I, and, and feel encouraged and, and brave, no matter what's happening in the world, I, I feel that that is that then I've done my job. Right. I feel like Fantastic. that's Fantastic. <laughs> so uh, 1400 agents, Melanie, like that's a lot. Like, you know, um, and these agents individually are handling so many transactions and myself and my husband being a full-time realtors uh, who are out in community actively working, we understand that it's a complexity that we are working on and constantly simplifying for the people so they can make a great decision. So give us more insight into uh, what does it look like managing 1400 agents like right now, we have an undeniable conversation of COVID-19 going on, right? So everybody's world changed overnight, right? right. And these 1,400 agents are constantly at work helping families make the biggest decisions of their life. 
So share with me, how did it look like in the last two months? Like, I want to hear from you who's leading the leaders in the community. Like, how did it change your world? Share with me. You know, it, it's, it, it's so funny because I don't feel like I'm leading. I feel like I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do. And apparently it just, it's a trickle effect. Just like you don't feel that you're leading and you're leading every day, right? We're all leading. We're all leading somebody. And yeah. so when, when something like that happens, you, you have to pivot. We've been saying that a lot at Keller Williams, right? You have to completely shift and pivot because our world just changed. And I'm so, I have so much respect and love for our agents in seeing how they completely reinvented the way that they do real estate overnight, right? And it was very much a, you know, when, when this first happened, honestly, we were like, we don't really know what the rules are going to be. We don't even know if we're going to be considered essential. We don't yeah. know. There were states that were shutting real estate down, yeah. right? There were states where you just can't do it. And so, I mean, literally, I wrote to the CEO, or I didn't write her. I emailed her and called her, and I said, Emily, how do we make sure that real estate's on the CEO, I mean, on the essential list for Austin, right? Because we yes. know these, the rules are coming out. And she had already been in conversations with the mayor. And then also we wrote Gary Keller and we said, Gary, please, whatever you can do, yes. you know, put a good word for us. Because, and here's the thing with that. And, and you saw different companies respond differently with that. And we felt that it was our duty to mm -hmm. make sure that clients are safe, honestly, my number one is our people. I want my people safe. I don't want people getting sick that don't need to get sick. And of course, that's what the agents feel about their consumers. It's the same relationship, right? Yeah. And so I, I love that our agents were so brave and so like, we're going to do what's right and we're not going to have showings right now. We're going to go virtually 100%. And you saw other agents in other places that kind of ignore all that. Yes. And, I think there's so much integrity in taking a stand and doing the right things because it was for the right reasons, right? For the right it was, reasons. It was for the right reasons. We had a seller at one of our listings mm -hmm. and he had COVID-19 hmm. and he was not telling anybody about it. Wow. And that was an, uh, an aha moment, honestly, that we said, okay, guys, we need to really step up here and help educate our people because you don't know, you, it, when you have something like this happening where people are dying, I mean, it's, it's, it's what none of us hopefully will ever see anything like this again in our lifetime, but mm -hmm. you don't know who it can impact. So when you're thinking of something as simple, and it's not simple, but mm -hmm. as simple as showing property or getting a deal done, you really have to think, how can I protect our people? Yet there's still people that need to move. There's still people that need to sell. How do we make it work and, and what's our new normal? So I'm just incredibly proud of yeah. how, how willing all of you guys were to completely shift, how willing the sellers and buyers were. Nobody wanted to be shut down, right? That nobody yeah. wanted to be shut down. And so I just applaud our industry and I really feel like Keller Williams, we stepped up big time to do big the right thing. To do the no, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, Melanie, you have been like in the front line of the KW technology, you know, innovating over the last few years. And I feel like all the work we put in up front has paid off now. Like it is, it is not a coincidence. You know, I remember the very first lesson I learned in real estate is that when the preparation meets opportunity, that's when the success happens. And I think this was a very live example that I got to see career-wise where we have been preparing. We didn't need to. Everything was great. Market has been doing great. Interest rates are great. Sellers are making money. Equity is lined up. And why are we preparing for more innovation? It is for when an opportunity. And sometimes, you know, a crisis, either we can take it and slow our, ourselves down or we can say, okay, we acknowledge the problem. Where do we need to focus? Where is our solution lie? And that's also innovation. And I'm so proud that the way you guys have positioned us as realtors and business owners, because ultimately we are running our own businesses on our own serving communities. And if we don't have the backing we had, and um, for all the people listening out there, I'm not sure if you guys knew, we at Keller Williams launched Pivot web series where we were trained three times a day. There were continuous education going on online. So we were at all times had our market on the fingertips and we knew what was coming next, how to innovate our approach to show properties as Melanie, you were mentioning, right? And um, so uh, knowing all this, what has been your favorite story? Like, is it something that sticks out that you are wowed by and you're like, 
gosh, I need to let everybody know about it. Like, I know you work with all the agents across the nation. Well, yeah, it, it's interesting. We had Mo, I don't know if you saw, and I know, I don't know what yeah. the timing of, of when you're going to play this, but, but we had Mo on yesterday, right? And Mo Anderson's our cultural icon for Keller Williams. And she was saying how, you know, you can't be, you can't be, you can't let fear take over, right? You have, yeah. there's every, every story, there's an opportunity. And she was talking about when she was 54 years old, she yeah. showed, you know, lost all her money. They look, it was the oil and gas thing. They lost all their money. They're 54 years old. They're $1.3 million in debt. And it wasn't until that point in her life that she met Gary Keller. And wow, wow what a ride that's been. She's gone on to be CEO. She's the, the, you know, she's the Oklahoma Hall of Fame winner. She went on to bring Keller Williams and make us a national company. Now we're number one in the world, right? Wow, because yep. that relationship had a lot to do with it. So when you ask me, what am I most excited about? I think about we have been preparing for this. We were built for this. Yeah. Keller Williams was built for this. When I got my license was the last shift, right? But yeah. That was a different shift. It was a different shift than now. That was an economic downturn. That was a housing crisis, right? Now it's the world has shut down. And what are you going to do about it, right? So this is this one impacts everyone. Yeah. So I love you said about we've been preparing and leading uh you know when you when you have the number one company in any kind of field that you're in right yeah. when you are part of the number one company if you don't change or evolve or keep keep growing and moving forward because the world's changing all around you all of a sudden you're number two and number four and then you don't exist anymore right same or yeah Right? And everything, you don't, you're just not relevant anymore. So yeah. I love that about three years ago, we have this really smart guy named Gary Keller, and he said, you know, we have to completely reinvent ourselves. We're number one in the world. And so all of the technology we've been laying down for, all of these things like zero plus mortgage, you know, being in the iBuyer market, protecting that agent relationship for the consumer, it's all for the consumer, right? All for the consumer, yep. Mm -hmm. All for the consumer. It is brilliant. And so now here we are. And we're in a time where a lot of companies probably will go out of business. They, they might not even make it through because we don't even know the repercussions of what's happening. Mm -hmm. And yet our agents can be calling their clients and saying, how are you doing? How are you doing on your, uh, your mortgage rate? What about a refi? What, what if you could like for a month and a half not have a mortgage payment? Yeah. You know, hearing stories. So you asked about stories. I have stories of people saving their clients $600 a month during this yes right or, yeah or I and all virtual it. all virtual melanie like like you don't like before there was in-person relationship and there's virtual right and times will cause you to do what you are always avoiding to do sometimes doesn't matter how effective and impactful it could be right. and having a care mortgage system that on i'm not lying i'm seriously like the moment i share my app link with my qualified client who is ready to make a purchase Within a few hours of it, I have an email, a text message from a mortgage representative, clearly describing exactly the conversation that has happened, what the next follow-up looks like, and it makes us look competent and good because the alliances and resources we have is a representation of us. Yeah. So I want to go back to what you just said, Melanie. Uh, I watched Mo Anderson's interview, by the way. Okay. I really want to touch on fear. Like somebody like Mo, who is like the epitome of leadership in our in our culture in our company um even she told said everybody right like hey for four days i was in fear so yeah. so you're gonna stay right like I, i'm speaking for all my clients all my business owners all the people i know it is undeniable even i froze i was like okay hold on everything we have been planning on from january 1st till march went out the window nobody right. knew right so I want to hear your experience. Did you hit that moment where you just froze or the human moment, you know, where we always are definitely making our decisions by design, not by default, but default hits. And through the default drives the design of how we want to live our day to day life and make decisions. I want to hear your story. Did that moment happen and it happened? What went through your mind and how did you continue to push through? Because I'm seeing you everywhere on Facebook, social media, being a force for good. Sure. Oh, that's, that's very sweet. Well, you know, when all this started coming down, um, I was actually at the Austin Business Journal Awards, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and so I, I, was, I was there that morning and we were having a lot of talk. Like it was the first day that there had been a confirmed case of COVID-19 in Austin. Do you remember that? 
Now remember that? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting at that place and I'm like, you know what? This is, it just got real to me. It's happening. This is happening. And I could feel it. And the room was half empty. So they were calling all the award winners and nobody, I, I mean, nobody misses these awards, right? Because it's yeah. all companies. It's Austin Business Journal, top res residential real estate yeah. award. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that person's not here. And I just felt it in the room. And I was sitting in the back going, and it, it became very clear to me, we're about to completely disrupt everything, right? So mm -hmm. that Monday, I went into the office. And we were almost the only people there. And I called my sons and I said, okay, I want you to come meet me at the office at four and help me bring everything that I need home. Because I, I know we're going to get shut down because we're about to hear the update about the stay at home, everything. And so when I got home and got set up, it's almost like it took me a week to realize what really happened because I was so forward thinking of, we have yeah. to get our people moving forward. We are fighting for staying essential. We're fighting for this, this. We're working with the team for how do we still assist our agents virtually. And so it was the second week, I think, that it really was like, whoo, where I really realized, wow, this is really happening. We are not in control. Mm -hmm. and honestly, I let go of it. I just let go of any control around it because I can't control what's happening in the world. But what I didn't realize was the most important thing I could do is take care of myself mm. and then our people in that order. It's like on the, on the airplane, right? Like if my health isn't well, I can't help others. Right. So, yeah. so we decided my husband would do all the shopping. Right. Uh, it, and my sons, they, they were kicking and screaming. I've got a college kid at home and a 16 year old, right? That just want to yeah. go see the friends. They can't. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so it was almost the home life was harder for me to shift and adjust than uh. the business. You know, I was so impressed at how our team and our agents just adapted. It's unbelievable. <laughs> like this yeah. happened. And Rosie, I always say that truth reveals itself in times of hardship, right? Yep. 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 And it's a real, it's a real revealing of who you really are. And so I think you're really going to see the people who come out of this, they'll come out smarter. Uh, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of agents. My first thing was how do I help my agents cut their costs? Right. Mm -hmm. And I had one meeting with one of, you know, switched right to zoom, got my, I've got my whole setup at home and we were looking at her budget and she said, my goal is really to get $20,000 off my budget this year. Yeah. She was at 8, I said, that's awesome. I said, well, keep going, keep looking, just keep looking. A week later, she had, you know, over 20,000 that she'd saved. Wow. Those mm. things matter. So I think that when you're, and this is one of the things that uh, I talk about in, in a control thing, like, like let go of control. You have no control of what's happening in the world. You can only control your mindset like Mo says, or mm. what you do with it. Right. And mm. so when I, when I'm coaching agents or I'm coaching with team leaders or whoever I'm talking to, and this is my self-talk, I say, how did I play offense today? Or how did I play offense today? Because so much of what's happening is happening to you. And if everything that's happening in your life is happening to you, then you're kind of not driving your, your, your future, right? You're so always on the receiving end. Like you are not at the cause, but you're at effect. And exactly. Which is which is a power, which is not a place of power. You no, know, it's, uh, yeah, it's a victimhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is a victimhood. And so in, 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 in our roles, you serving your clients, us serving agents, it's all the same. There's a lot of defense you have to play. You have to be the person that solves the problems or have people you get them with. Right. Yeah. However, it does not make excuses for not playing offense because you can never win a game if you mm -hmm. don't play offense. And me growing up as an athlete and, I played basketball, track, and volleyball. That made so much sense to me. And when I said to myself, you know, every day I'm just going to make sure I play offense. This okay. was right. This was all starting right before. It's about a month before because I just just feel how busy we were getting. Right, we were getting yeah. about to have the best year ever in real estate in the company. Absolutely. And you know, Mel yeah, you know, Melanie. Um, it was very. Um, eye-opening for me to hear this when I was speaking to business owners, I was speaking to my clients across the board, barbershops, um, tile shops, plumbers, all of them were on track to have their best year ever, including realtors, you know, and the interest rates were best, prices were great, inventory is starting to pick up, builders were great, uh, doing great, and then March hits, 15th yeah. of March, COVID hits, right? Okay. And it shut right. down. And, um, you know, Melanie, I started speaking to all the, you, what you just said to, right now about fear, slowing down and letting go of control, acknowledging that what's happening around us is not 
through us. It's happening outside of us. And regardless of how much we think, how much we process, how much we uh, want to change it, we can't. It is outside of us. So it is a moment where we take a piece of paper and we draw a line. What do I control and what do I not control? And focus 100% of energy on what we control. And I truly feel like, you know, um, I'm very, very proud to be the part of the culture and community of realtors where they are having such a serving heart in this time. You know, this is, I, you know, uh, Melanie, I was compelled. Like sometimes adversity brings fear and sometimes it brings confidence. For me, it, it was like confidence. I was like, right. okay, yeah. if it's out of the control, let's show the best you are, right? And I remember <laughs> making phone calls to my people that I know and have served over years and I couldn't help, I didn't need no uh, market knowledge, nothing. I just needed a heart to give them a call. And the simple phone call we have made as a team is that, look, today I'm not calling you as a realtor. I'm calling you as a friend. We happen to know each other through real estate, but today I'm calling you as a friend. Is there anything you guys need? Because I have seen on our Facebook group, we as realtors are very resourceful. We know everyone. You do. Right? And yeah, um, the biggest hiccup for people was who had to move how do I get cleaning lady over? How do I get tile guy over? How do I get carpet guy over? Because all businesses were shut down. Right. In that moment, what Keller Williams gave us as a platform to communicate, to virtual tour, um, and also encouraging other business owners to reach out to their clientele and show the same care and just make sure their clientele is okay. Because this is all we need right now. A heart that's Absolutely. full of care and love. Yeah, yeah. I, I love I love that so much, you know, because everyone's home. <laughs> yeah, everyone's home. everyone's home. And again, this is touching everyone. It's not just you. You are not yeah. alone. It's every single person, and it's impacting them differently. You have mm. no idea how much stress and anxiety this is causing somebody. So mm. when you can come from that, that's another good point that you brought up, because when you come from taking action and, and just caring and loving on people, it takes you out of the fear, because you can't have fear and faith at the same time. You know, I ask Mo that question. Yeah. I talk about it all the time. It just is impossible. So if you're caring for somebody, it's hard for you to not, feel like you're taking action right wow. and, and, and just watch those relationships when you when we all get out of this that you took time to call those people that's not why you do it you do it because you really care about them yeah you know, absolutely you're with people, right yeah. but what a wonderful time like I had one person tell me that they were calling and their script was well now that I have more time to come like I wouldn't say that I would say actually I'm really thinking about you and I want to make sure that you're okay how's your family doing are you guys able to get groceries I know that you, you know, your wife has whatever, right? Yeah. And, and how thoughtful that is because aren't we as realtors and in real estate, aren't we the connectors of the community? Big time, big time. Melly, you said it in the beginning. We as realtors help people make the biggest decision of their lifetime. Like how many times in a year do people go out and write a check of $350,000 to buy a property? How many times in a lifetime do they do that? Exactly. It's a handful of times. And the trust is at peak in that relationship when you're choosing to work with someone. And, and the amount of time we spend, Melly, I know you are a realtor. I know your story, how you, uh, you know, were the rookie of the year. You pivoted your businesses through all markets. Um, don't, you, don't you think like through real estate while transacting with people, you become a part of their life? You know their families. You know what they're looking forward to. They have the baby in the house that you help them buy. They just sold their property and buy a new home for their children. Like, it is beautiful stories. You're living a beautiful life at a larger scale with people. And how do you just disconnect from it in a time of crisis? Like, you said in your, with your family, like, you have two sons. Your husband travels a lot for work, and you're always managing work and business by yourself. So how did, tell me about your personal life. How, I know you told me that work was easier and personal was harder. Uh, talk about that. I'm sure people. I don't people know about easier. It was just, it, it was more natural for me. More to natural to you. Okay. It's like the, the yeah, it, it's, it's, it's actually more difficult to reach people virtually than in person, right? You can get so much more done in person and just knock things out. So you just had to redefine a, a new way of being. Um, so, but at home, it was just like, you know, my children aren't used to me being here working. So all day they're like, <laughs> are you just talking to people all day long? <laughs> and it's, yeah, I am actually, it's what I do. And, and they, but they know that it's so cute. They're like, are you on a call? Are you on a call? 
But honestly, like, like you said, there's a lot of beautiful things that are going to come out of it. Yeah. A lot of beautiful things. And for, for me personally, my beautiful thing is that I go down and I have lunch with my family every day. I get to see my family. I, right. I'm, I'm not as stressed in the morning and coming home when I'm done with here, I hit the, hit the hiking trail with both of my sons and the dogs. Right. Yeah. And it's just our natural thing. So I feel like I got time back, even though I'm working more hours Yeah. and I, I think we've all been as a society and this is, this is not just real estate. This is everyone, right? We've been so busy being busy and, and having somewhere to go or something to do and somewhere to go and somewhere to something to do that we forgot. We forgot about our family, even though we're all family. I mean, I live for my family. You live for yours. And most yep. people listening would agree with that, but everybody can relate to what I'm saying right now because the connections, the conversations, the getting off the social media, put down your phone. Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Oh, time together, that quality time. Oh, we can't go run to the mall. We can't run to do this. And you want to do that? You want to do that? No, we're stuck at home. So let's all sit in the backyard and have a conversation about life. Wow. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, actually, this reconnection. And my sister, you know, my I'm from Los Angeles originally and I grew up in Lake Tahoe area, but my, my sister was sending me photos of LA before uh -huh. this. And mm -hmm. now today, and it's before it's brown, terrible air in LA. It's awful. You got to be by the beach to be able to breathe. And so <laughs> and that's why I don't live there. I, I love visiting and I love being by the beach and I love being in the mountains, but there's a lot of smog there, right? And you see that in cities where you're, you know, have mountains around and, and things like that. It's blue skies now, Rosie. It's oh my God. Skies. I'm seeing those images all over Facebook, Instagram. Oh. Oceans are cleaning up. Skies right. are clear. Yeah. So it's like not only are we getting a reset, our our world is our earth is getting a reset. Earth is really. So uh, Melanie, um, knowing that you interact with so many, uh, you know, realtors and humans and society on day to day basis, what did you think? Like when this crisis happened, all of a sudden, when we all realized, okay, it's here. It was a talk before. Now it's actually in action. What did you think in that moment? Society needed society needed the most from each other? Oh, from each other? Yeah. I think, well, first, number one, we needed clarity because there was confusion on what was the new norm going to be and what could you do, what could you not do? So yeah. I felt like at the beginning, we really needed clarity, right? We needed to yeah. know what's safe to do, what's not safe to do. Actually, I was relieved when they put in the mask that you had to wear the mask because I felt like there was not an even playing field for people, right? People mm -hmm. feel safe when they understand the rules and the rules yeah. were not clearly laid right away. Yeah, it was it was not. Yeah. So the, the second thing they need is, is they're isolated. And so when they're isolated, they need community. And it, and it's interesting to see, and I bet you could go in any neighborhood in Austin, in Los Angeles, wherever, right? Anywhere in Germany, I'm reaching out to my best friend in Germany, all yeah. over the world, right? Yeah. You take a walk, you're going to see more people out. Oh my God. Did you see some neighbors in your neighborhood that you've never seen before? Yes. <laughs> I was like, right? I didn't know so many pretty faces live around here. I like, know. I'm Who are you? Like, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. I've actually went into a couple recruits too. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually, to be honest with you, um, my coach said something and I'm sure it came from uh, our real estate world again. They said, um, Faith requires us to believe in something that doesn't exist. So does fear. So what we choose is our choice. Do we choose to believe in fear or do we choose to believe in faith? And right. I have experienced both, you know, like through growing real estate. I feel like I'm a much better person today than I was 10 years ago. <laughs> and, um, you know. Hopefully we all can Roger, say that. Roger, <laughs> Roger, my husband, probably have his own opinion about it. <laughs> Um, I think he'd agree. I think he'd agree. He would agree. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take your comment on that. <laughs> so um, I realized that, you know, when we live in fear, it is such a tension constantly within us. And when we have faith, it requires, it makes the same effort. It's the source is same. Thought process is same. And faith, we go through the same crisis with ease, with comfort. And I think that's when the sense of community kicks in. We're not thinking about what's going to happen to me or everybody around me. We're thinking society as a whole. And all of a sudden when, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but I'm learning the moment I have seen my problems, mine, they're really big. 
But the moment I have taken those problems and checked in with the world a little bit, like are those problems happening in the world? For some reason, that same problem became very small. Right? And I feel like more we shared and more community oriented we became, more the problem became smaller because we realized we are there for each other. And I think, uh, thank you so much for sharing that insight because you're right. We instantly needed clarity and we needed community. Yeah. And, and, and I think that kind of changed everything, right? And the yeah. energy shifted. And you know, fear, I love this, a false evidence appearing real, right? And fear, <laughs> I would say fear takes like 10,000 times more energy than faith. Oh my gosh. Fear, takes, fear is such a negative, right? It just, it's like you can't control it. If you can't control your fear, you're in trouble. You have to yeah. like take a walk, <laughs> like a, right? It's false evidence appearing real. And most of the things you're fearful of never will happen bad things will happen to you in your life they're going to they happen to everyone but exactly the things you're fearful of right but mm. when you have faith when you have faith and belief in the good in life it's funny usually those do show up for you and if you just pay attention to your mindset and like it's funny because I, I work with many people and there are certain people that when something happens you know they're going to go to the negative they're going to say oh I knew that about that person or I knew that right and yeah. I said really let's think about that actually I don't read it that way I think it means this yeah it's really positive and guess what nine times out of ten I'm the right one in that conversation wow so, yeah the whole, you teach people how to treat you so so like there there's one neighbor hopefully this person doesn't see it <laughs> sometimes people you know let's be real here right it's like here you are your person who just builds people and you love people and then you have a neighbor that you're like you get along with this person like what is it's they're angry all the time either our dogs barking or our music's too loud whatever and you're like okay but we live here right okay okay yeah. and i'm trying to respect her and it's funny my first question to her was when this happened is, how can I help you and what do you need? And wow. she was so like taken aback by it. And I really genuinely meant that. I said, listen, if you have any trouble, whatever, because we are all connected and this is happening to us. And like you said, Rosie, you nailed it. Instead of people being stuck in their own world and their own problems, you don't know what other people are going through. We don't, we, we mm -hmm. have no idea. Everyone has stuff they're going through, but some people do a great job of just not sharing that because they choose faith. Yep, yep. I choose faith doesn't mean bad things don't happen to us yeah we, we, we focus on the good and more good comes back right yes. so, so with this we thing that's happening to all of us it does help to get us out of our own you know mindset and say oh wow this is definitely a we thing and the more we pull together the faster we're gonna get through this the more we do the shutdown when everybody behaves that's why with the real estate I was like okay guys Follow the rules. I am I am the first person to find a creative way around a rule. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, it. that's called innovation. <laughs> it is, it is. And I'm like, okay, but you know what? What about this? Or you know, nothing illegal ever. I'm always I never do that. But yeah. it's just because it's always done been done one way does not make it the best way. So even when we we're on the call with the CEO of Abor and it was all the owners of all the companies, you know, and I'm sitting there going, well, what about, you know, how about this? And, and, yeah. and, they, and he said, but think about it. Where's the, where's the fine line? If you mm -hmm. let people do open houses for, uh, you know, vacant properties, then people are going to come and then somebody touches the doorknob and I'm like, yes, okay, fine. So we just have to take a stand but we needed clarity and we all knew the same rules and then we could move forward, right? And then we could connect with each other with the solution and we work so much faster together. And yes. this should be for all of us that we yes. should always be working together, right? Together, we're so much more powerful. So much more powerful. you like, uh, I cannot tell you, I don't want to take my eyes off of you, so I am not writing, but I'm absorbing everything you're saying so badly. <laughs> like you just said, like drop some powerful nuggets. Like when fear hits, you can't think. It almost seems like from your conversation, Melanie, that fear is a form confusion at a very high level. When we're extremely confused on what to expect, what not to expect, we are left with nothing but fear. And the moment fear has entered, our willpower is gone our willpower to wake up and build big businesses, our willpower to wake up and do good for us and other people is gone. Everything is gone. Fear is just instantaneously kills all the goodness within a human. And right. on contrast, like it's so amazing what you said that the moment crisis hit, people needed clarity. So in any business, if we are able to go outside and be resourceful and seek clarity on what to expect next, 
and create a predictability for even for a few days. Like in right. a transaction. It's going to change anyway. It's going to change and then you will adapt. Yeah. yeah. And nobody, nobody here has a crystal ball. Like, wouldn't you say so, right? Like, mm -hmm. we all want to make all predictions to create certainty, feel safer. But prediction um, or just what to expect in the next few days is good enough too sometimes. You know, yes. like everybody's uncertain. Let's see what we can expect in the next seven days. And right. we go, go as far as we can. And once we get there, we'll see further. And yeah. I'm sure a lot of business owners are going to be listening into this today. And this lesson and mindset applies to everyone. It does. To a landscaper, to a builder, to a realtor, to a doctor, to a dentist, to, uh, to you, to big leaders out there, everyone, right? Yeah, so um, what do you see changing for good in real estate industry going further, Melanie? Like, what do you think will happen for good? I'm, like, you're like, oh, I'm glad this, is, this changes for good. This should have happened a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to selfishly answer yes. it first. Okay, I'm going to start with me because, again, I, I live in my world, right? So uh -huh. I see everything through my eyes and my perspective. And then, and then I take that and say, well, is everybody like that? Or does that help them, right? Because I can only see through my own eyes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so for me, what I've realized is how much we can get done virtually. And so, for example, there's been so many meetings, you know, I've been recruiting and growing the company and doing consultations with people for 12 and a half years. Like I never, yeah. ever, I'm super entrepreneurial. You, you couldn't have paid me enough money to still be in this role. Yet every day I get up and say, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. What this way of communicating has done for me has taught me, wow, this is doable. This is doable regardless, like let's say something happened and, I, and I'm, I'm under the weather. So maybe I don't have 100% energy to be in the office. But there's no reason why you, you and I can't jump on a Zoom call. And yep. Because we're still having the connection. I yep. can still have the connection with you. Yep. Um, so I, I, think it, I think what I'm experiencing, honestly, is what everybody's experiencing. So no. that's why it starts with me. But it's like everyone is going through the same thing. So what I think will stay is that you know, think about it. Buyers moving and relocating to Austin who never saw the property. That is not a new concept. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been happening. So it's not like we haven't been doing real estate virtually already. It's just to the magnitude. So I think this is going to make confidence in, in, the real in the real estate agent's abilities a lot higher of like, wow, look at this. You know, our technology skills are going to be better. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you any of the 3D products that can really design the house and you can really see things you can't see in person, I think it's going to raise our bar on how we present ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, you know me, my background is film and television. And so I think your image is really important when you're presenting. And yeah. so when people would come meet with me in the office, you know, I've got my screen set up the right way. I have them sitting a certain way. So when I shifted to home, I'm like, oh, man. And usually, you know, I have my <laughs> screen behind me so you just see guitars right now yep, yep. I love the guitars <laughs> yeah, there you go got a little uh, Gary Keller with us um, <laughs> but it's how are you presenting yourself and I think that's gonna help everybody so so from mm -hmm. a presentation standpoint I think people that have been avoiding it that oh I hate being on camera or whatever it's like number one that's who you are so you, you said it you look like that. That is you. So yeah. why don't you then get used to that, get comfortable with yourself? It's confidence. This yeah. is a confidence builder opportunity. It's a great exercise for people to get really comfortable on being on camera. So I think that is really going to help everyone moving forward. Be yeah. more confident. And, and, and honestly, because they're seeing themselves as they're having this conversation, they're going to start paying attention to how am I actually presenting, right? And so- yeah. What am I doing I shouldn't be doing? So what, an, what a wonderful opportunity to up your game yep. in how you're communicating with people. So I think that's going to be a new normal for all our agents. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just think it's going to boost buyer confidence on buying you know, properties unseen. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I just think it's going to up every level of our technology because we've had to become real masters of it. So mm -hmm. do I think, though, that we're going to stop doing showings and that's all going to go away? No, I don't. No, I no, no. We are relational. We are people. That's how you connect. I don't think that's going to go away, but I just think that that it's a new level of how we communicate. And I'm excited about it. It seems like from your conversation that almost the world is going to change even 
almost in every industry for good. Like we are going to be more effective because we gained more time back because we talk about that all the time. The person who's super successful and the one who is not has the same 24 hours. How they chose to spend those 24 hours is determining their results. And now everybody's gaining time back. That means more for our consumer, like our clientele. We always want to make sure they never feel like that we're not paying enough attention to them and we are not keeping them in loop. That is our we real like company like Keller Williams has been agent centric, and we as realtors are are client centric, clients first. And all right. of a sudden now we are able to do video calls with them rather than having just a phone call. Right. And so I'm beautiful. I'm loving the effectiveness of it. Yeah, beautiful. Well, and you have to communicate at such a higher level now, right? Because yeah. you're not in person, so it's like you have to make those extra touches. So you're going to put all your systems in place. You know, we have this great product called Command that we rolled out, right? Yeah, oh my gosh, yeah. And so, uh, another fun thing is that all these agents now finally are taking time to go in there and like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, I just got all these leads from this Facebook ad. I can't believe it, right? And they're yeah. going on and on because they were so busy they didn't have time. They were yep. so busy they were not hanging out with their families, right? So when this comes out, the question is, how much of this do people keep? And how much, how quickly do they go back to their old habits? And that's the, wow. that's the challenge I would say is keep the good from this. Don't, don't lose that, right? This is, this is truly, it's awful what's happening in the world. And there's a gift there, right? There's always an upside to everything if you can see it. So mm -hmm. keep the good things. Keep the family time if you're really connecting with your family. Keep the, the connection with your clients instead of just calling them or texting them. Maybe you hop on a FaceTime instead. Right? Oh my gosh. Yes. You know, Melanie, I was surprised uh, when COVID happened. I made, uh, you know, naturally, instinctively, I wanted to reach out to my people. And the, by day three or four, I was like, you know what? I don't need no phone. I started FaceTiming everyone. I was okay. like, it's so much more fun. I got to catch people in their kitchens, in their backyards, you know, uh, cleaning up their houses. We right. get to be us, you know, we get to connect at a very, very, very um, natural way, who we are. And I think yeah. that's such a good that we must keep because living a relationship is so beautiful when we are not someone that we are not. Yeah. And people have to get over perfection. People have yeah, to get. They need to get over perfection. Yeah. Get over it. Just get over it. You know, people love you because you're real. And so when you call your client, FaceTime them, and they got the baby on the hip, and they're mixing the spaghetti sauce, and they're like, "Hey," you're like, "Oh my gosh, I love your new backsplash." Yeah, yeah. Look at the pool we had put in. Whatever, right? It's real. Or oh, great, the baby just threw up on me. Whatever. It's <laughs> <real>. exactly <laughs> right. It's, it's we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. And so all of a sudden, if 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 something happens to the other person, that happens to us. It just becomes normal and there's a new connection there. Absolutely. And I, you know, um, Melanie, um, uh, our team has been pretty uh, pro proactive in helping sellers and we moved our people very successfully, uh, you know, with all the grace and help we got. Um, you know what I'm really excited about? I'm Tell really me. excited about how much time buyers and sellers are going to save. It used to take 15 to 20 showings to get a solid offer or multiple offers, right? Now, um, as agents have upped their game, like our team has gone very intense into virtual tours, like we are doing the measurements of the house. You can literally measure the living room, furniture. As a matter of fact, we are giving personalized videos if they have special upgrades done in a home. And now I'm getting out of state buyers, in local buy even local buyers, they're like, okay, let me really walk through the house. Let me really look at it, my grandma's dining table that I don't wanna give away and I wanna make sure it fits is actually going to fit before I get in a car and drive so far or ask a realtor to drive that far. Yeah. And now our clients are happier. Yeah, of course. Well, think about like the, the, the guy who's at work and he can't sh go see the properties till Saturday and that listing goes pending on Thursday because he didn't get to see it. But virtually he can now, right? So it's yep. going to help clients Oh it's my gosh. Everything, I right? think the consumer is going to come out so much happier, more yeah. insightful, more knowledgeable, uh, time gained back, happier yep. because there's less, you know, how much it takes to keep your house clean and go in and out for 15 to 20 showings. Yeah. Especially Although if you can get too dark. Away from that. I don't think we're going to go away from showings. I think, I think that, yes, I agree. I would want to show my home in its best most beautiful state of course right yeah. I, I i just don't think and, and we might see less of them 
But yep. I do think it's going to become an advantage when an agent says, hey, I'm still happy to show you property. Like, they, they're oh, still going to want But if you don't have the time, that's where I see, or if you have a really hot market. I mean, gosh, I had another agent of ours. He was telling me the day before we had the shutdown, he was standing in Great Hills, which is a, a beautiful community up north for those people that don't know. And he's standing in line out of 10 agents in groups to go see the property one at a time, right? And staying a couple feet apart. And, and then the shutdown happened. And it's like, okay, well now what? Think about that. The, the hot inventory, if we get more comfortable with this scenario, which we're learning through right now together, we're learning through it. That's going to help those people that don't have time. They're working all day or whatever. And they're like, listen, I want to buy in this neighborhood. Well, guess what? That this house just became available I'm going to send you the information. It might be pending by tomorrow. It's definitely going to be pending by Saturday. And this is not, it's funny. People have a, have a funny idea. When you're a great salesperson, you're there to take care of the people. It's not about selling them something. Real no. estate is not about selling something. It's about helping them find that perfect property, especially on the buy side. And then for the seller, it's maximizing their, their equity that they have, right? So, so if you have a way to make that happen for that person virtually, I think that's what's going to stick with us. It's powerful. Like, look at how busy life is for people who are buying too. Like, it almost sounds like from your conversation, Melanie, that when buyers are now going to stand in that line to have a physical showing with the realtor, they have a 99% good idea what to expect because they've virtually walked through it. It's, it's not a 2D Photoshop pictures anymore. It's actual virtual tour and they know they're there because most of the criteria clicks off. And yeah. now more meaningful buyer visits are able to happen. Sellers are able to really expand their exposure with the buyers who have actually been convinced virtually as well. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm very, very, I'm very, very looking forward to how this is going to change the way business works. Yeah. Melly, um, I, I have to ask you this question. I know the clock is running out. Um, as in my lifetime, as I've seen people take big leaps of success and I've seen big leaders have big influence on uh, crowds and folks in the different industry, I've often seen a great leader is able to see through the chaos something that others cannot see, a huge possibility, a positive possibility that others can see. And once they see it, they have a way of helping other people see the same thing by being an example. Yeah, I want to know, to me, when I say that, you come to my mind. Aww. You come to my mind so powerfully, like you have, you know, you're someone who cannot, you cannot be told, hey, just stay home and just do the thing. You're in action. You've always been the epitome of example. How do you do that? And what keeps you going? Mm. Well, it's a great question. You know, it's, it, I think back to, you know, when I moved to Germany, right, and I didn't speak the language, I had always told myself, I was in my late 20s, I was 27 years old, I'd always told myself, listen, I, I'm a leader of teams, I'm creative, I had a, you know, musician background, everything. I said, but languages are not my thing. Languages are not my thing. And I went to Germany and, and life shows up for me and I fall in love with a German guy and I moved there a year later. So I have to learn the language, right? <laughs> I, I don't like languages, right? Because my older sister spoke three languages. Well, a year later, I was fluent in German running movie sets. And I sat down and I said, never, ever, ever, ever like limit your potential. And so I think that was a real release for me of like what's even possible. I've always been highly intuitive with things and I've always been able to just see opportunity before others could, but that was a big shift for me. And it was funny because when I came to Austin again, do you remember what I said? I said, I only, I only came because I saw the opportunity that Austin did not know who we were. Or wow. Where we were. I could yeah. see that. I remember I I, I have always believed that, right? And so, and then if you remember the first year I was here, I won that Mercedes. Yes! From, yes. And, and, and nobody knew, nobody knew we were losing so much money. We had to do a short sale on our, our house in Nevada and we lost all the money we brought from Germany from the real estate crash in Nevada. Yeah. And so I was literally down to my last dollars. And so when I bought that one ticket for $100, I said, well, I'm just going to do it, whatever. And six months later, when I found out I won that, it was a trip to Germany and all that stuff. And I got that letter that I had written. So we have this class called wow. Oh my God. Know, I remember that story. And it says, 
to write yourself a letter one year from now, what has happened? And yeah. it, I got my bold letter, if you remember that story. And it was, yes. and I, in there I wrote, take my kids back to Germany, which we hadn't been back in seven years since we'd left, and get a new sports car. That was in my bold letter. So the next summer, that's what we did. So that was, you know, right when I moved here nine years ago, when all that was happening, like right about now in June. And I think all of those things, like, like you really create your future. And so I'm answering it in a different way because I really believe that you get to design. You are the architect of your future. Yeah. And if you don't like the situation you're in, then change it. And you can only change that here. And mm -hmm. then by the, of course, the activities have to follow it, right? Mm -hmm. what, what, remember what I said about offense versus defense? Defense, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to be a visionary if you're playing defense all the time. You can only allow your creative channels, like Mo said yesterday, you can only be creative when you're not stressed, right? Mm -hmm. When you're not coming from fear. Yeah. And so I've learned my whole life, I'm like, I believe that anything is possible. I can see things. And you know, when it gets hard, I'm like, okay, we're going to find another way. We're going to find another way. And honestly, when I moved to Austin, the whole reason besides wanting to make a name for Keller Williams is I wanted to work with Gary Keller. And that was my goal. I want to learn from this person. I think he's the smartest guy in real estate. And it's so ironic now that I work for Gary Keller. Wow. Oh my God. Right? You so, know, once again, in your story, um, I've been very intently listening to your conversation today. And con consistently, you have uh, shared your story about how you went through crisis, lost everything, you know, one Mercedes, lost $100 that you spent, and, uh, you know, coming out of Nevada market and having the clarity and confidence that, hey, no, whatever happened, happened, there's still a possibility. It's not you change industry. You were in the same industry, and you right. came out of crisis, and you launched yourself into the new market, and with a vision to be able to see clear. Today, right. consistently, through different stories you have shared, you have shown me how in crisis, it almost sounds like let go of control mm -hmm. because what you can control, you can change. Right. Then have clarity, crystal clear clarity of what is it the outcome you're seeking. Like in your case, you're saying that you want to work with Gary Keller. You knew, Austin didn't know about the company that you knew through experience. And then have confidence to take action. Have confidence to take action and always be community oriented. Come back and give back to the people who have gotten you there. And you only I win so together. You only win together, Rosie. Win together. You, you know, oh my gosh. That have a bloodbath behind them. They are the, they're terrible, right? It's like when you turn around a leader that's a really a leader should be surrounded by people. It's a we, it's a team, right? Mm. And, and, and one thing I'll share with you too is when I remember when I moved to Austin and I looked at the top down list. Yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, our, our number one agent in Reno was doing more than the number one agent here in Austin for our office where I was. Yes, yes. I was like, wow, shocking, right? So we had about three people that did 20 million and we were doing 24 million GCI that year. Well, nine years later, I looked at that list again and I found the old list. That's how I knew. I like had it in a book on my shelf that I oh, exciting. forgot about. And my goal was to raise the lid on how many people were millionaires and have people run bigger businesses, right? Well, I wow. counted how many people did more than 20 million and it was 37. Yep. Wow. Right? And 37. And it all came from crisis. You were, you came here during crisis. We were coming right out of crisis again. That's so right. through crisis comes the opportunity again. That's right. So, oh my gosh. Itself, right. So always, so don't let fear control you. You can control what you can control, get clarity. And then, and then never, ever, ever let somebody tell you that your vision is not doable. People will tell you that your whole life, they will put you down. They will tell you you're crazy. Don't believe it. Then surround yourself with different people. If, if that's the case, right? Because if you have a vision, you follow that because you have a vision. That's a gift, right? Follow that through. Your work is not done until you get there, right? And yep. as, as you evolve, it'll change and, 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 and adapt, but it'll still that clarity of like where you want to go. Mm. It's your journey, guys. You're the architect. Don't let yep. anyone ever define that for you, right? And you know, I I'm, I'm, cannot wait for this message to be out there because every person who is impacted by this crisis one or the other way or not even or watching other people go through this, they must hear this. Because everything we are talking about, confidence, letting go of control, create clarity, you know, go back and create more opportunities with your community. It's all the things we are, we are in control of. And the only thing that's standing in between us doing it and us intending to do it 
is our thinking and feeling. What are we exactly. thinking? What are we feeling? And that creates action or inaction. So it grateful. It impacts your energy too, right? Like, yeah. I, know, I know we're wrapping up, but just, you know, I have a couple investment properties here yeah. and, and a lot of responsibility, right? And so uh, with that comes cost when they don't pay their money, right? So here yep. we are in this crisis and you're hearing all this thing about don't pay your rent. You can't get kicked out. And I said, you know what? I just have total trust. This is all going to work out. And literally one of my renters uh, reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, my husband's been furloughed. They're a doctor, right? She, he's yeah. a doctor. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you work with us and, and we worked something out. And I said, of course I'll work with you. They paid in full because at the end of the day, they got money at the last minute. Everything wow. worked out as it should. You know what I mean? Just believe it. Find ways to make it happen and, and never, never give up on, on what really matters. And you are a gift, right? And live in your, live in your gift zone. And if you don't know what that is, find it. <laughs> wow. Like before, so right? powerful. So powerful. So guys, what I'm taking away is never, ever, ever, ever give up on what matters to you. Because desire is something we are born with. And doesn't matter how many times we try to kill it and say, you know what, we're going to be okay. We can settle for less. But the desire never lets you sit down. It's going to show up one or the other way. Might as well get along with it, get on the train of it and go for it and give your all. So that looking back, you can at least say, I gave it my 100%. Results don't matter as long as you have people who are around you to care for you, to love for you. That's what it really left down to, you know, and like in this, in this crisis, Melanie, um, hearing you, I got to self-reflect at so many times. I got to today know what really matters. I told Roger, I said, Roger, we need so little to be happy. And to be honest with you, in this household, all I do is my office, my backyard, and my home and kitchen. Yeah. And rest is all outdoors with my family, with my son. And I was like, that's all we need to be happy. And in that busy moment, as you were saying, we miss out. We think we're working for our families, but we miss out this time with our families. Right. We're working hard to create opportunity and freedom for our families, but we don't get to be with our families. So this was the time to self-reflect. Yes. Ellie, thank you so much for spending such a precious time of yours. I'm so honored and I can't wait to see the questions and see what you do next and be inspired constantly by you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. It's an honor to be on your, on your conversations. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to reach out to people and give it my best. Give other business owners the same insight that we are tapped into through you guys. You know, like motivation is like breakfast. You need everything every day. And when we are tapped into sources like you guys and other big leaders in our industry, we can't help but be our best. And it is our commitment and responsibility we give it back to our people who have allowed us to be this successful in business. So thank you, Melanie. Can't wait to see you on the next post, next webinar, and uh, next big face-to-face -face meeting that I'm looking yeah, forward a to. Hug, a big hug in person. Oh yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. Look forward to many more days, many more webinars with you. And I wish you a very, 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 very happy day with your family. Mwah. Thank you, my dear. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>